Hey, it's Nolan Mathias from Mortgage360, and today we're talking variable rate mortgages because, quite frankly, with everything that's going on in the world with this pandemic and with interest rates being at all-time lows, variable rates are becoming more and more popular. But it's important to understand what you need to look for in a variable rate lender and also what criteria you need to use in order to determine whether to lock in. And you might be surprised at what the lock-in criteria that we suggest is going to be. But you're going to have to wait till the end of this video in order to get that information. And before we get into it, do me the favor. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and please hit the like button because ultimately how many people get this information and how many people see this video is completely up to you and whether or not you click the like button. So do us that favor. You can wait till the end. You can do it now. Totally up to you, but please do it. Okay, so there's three things that are really important to understand when we're choosing a variable rate mortgage. The first is lender selection. The second is how the actual lock-in process works. And the third is the criteria that you should use in order to determine whether it's the right time to lock in. And that's the piece that's gonna surprise you and also the piece that you have to wait till the end of the video to see. So let's start first with lender selection because nobody wants to be the guy that gets caught with a lender that won't let you move or that's gonna charge you a massive payout penalty or who's gonna surprise make you lock in at a super high rate. So the three things that we look at with lenders are first of all, the set of rates that they are typically using to allow clients to lock in. And it's different with different lenders. You know, a big bank typically has a higher lock-in rate than a monoline lender has. And you know, we see, we've seen two monoline lenders be basically a half a percent apart right now on their lock-in rates and everything else in the product is pretty much identical. So how the how they select the rates that they're going to allow you to lock into is important. And in the event that over time they aren't being as competitive, we also wanna make sure that we have the ability to switch to a different lender. So in other words, we wanna avoid things like no refinance clauses and bona fide sale clauses, which are essentially the same things, but one is a fancier term for the other. And the reason we wanna avoid those is because if our variable rate provider isn't playing ball and giving us a really good lock-in rate, we wanna be able to take our mortgage and take it to a different lender for a better rate, even if we have to pay the penalty. Because quite often what we're finding is when we're locking in, you can switch to a different lender, pay a three month interest penalty, and still save more than what that penalty would cost. So it's important to be able to move the mortgage. And the third thing we really look at is that penalty because there are lenders out there that will offer super low variable rates, but they end up putting in flat fee penalties, which basically make it super expensive to move. And if it's super expensive to move, guess what? They can pretty much make you pay whatever you want when you go to fix your mortgage and lock in the rate. So we wanna avoid that sort of scenario and that's why lender selection is so important. Now let's talk about the actual process when we get to the point of locking in our mortgage because what doesn't happen is you don't get to just lock it in at the rate that you're paying on that particular day. In fact, what ends up happening is you have to pick a fixed rate term that's typically longer than the amount of time you have remaining on your mortgage. So let's say you've got a five-year variable and you are two years into it, you've got three years left on that five-year variable. If you want to lock in, you've got to take a three-year fixed or longer, which is, which is why it's so important to know how they choose their lock-in rates because you're going to have to choose one of their fixed rates. And if your lender's fixed rate isn't competitive to, compared to what else is out there, it's a good idea to actually go out and shop around. And most people don't realize this, but when you're locking in, it's not just about saying to my lender, okay, I'm ready to lock in. You actually wanna go through that whole mortgage process again and make sure that you search the entire market to make sure that you can find the absolute best rate. Now, the third thing and, and the most important thing, this is the criteria of how you should know whether or not you should lock in your mortgage. And this is really important. And it's not what you think because there was a study done in 2001 by a guy named Mosh Malewski out of the Schulich School of Business where he compared, compared fixed versus floating rates. And most people think that you know variable rates are better off when interest rates are going down and they perform worse when interest rates are going up. And that's not necessarily the case. What the actual data tells us is that whether or not you win with a fixed or a, or a variable rate mortgage is almost entirely based on the difference between the rates when you get the mortgage, or in this case, when you're choosing to lock in. And what you always wanna do is you always wanna make sure that you've got the lowest rate that's available at the time. So let's say you've got a 3% variable rate mortgage and the lock-in rate that you're being offered is 3.5%. Well, you're half a percent lower than your lock-in rate, so it's probably not a good idea to lock in. 
But if you can get a lock-in rate at 2.5% or maybe even 3% depending on your risk tolerance, then it may be a good choice to lock in. So the key thing here is you only want to lock into a fixed rate mortgage if the rate that you're getting is lower than the variable rate mortgage that you already have. It's pretty simple, right? You just only want to lock in if you can get a lower rate. Now, one thing I would caution is if rates are going down, and you can get a lower rate on a fixed rate than a variable, you may wanna just kind of ride it out and see where rates go because it could be a sign that rates are gonna get better and better and better, and your variable could still end up outperforming your fixed rate mortgage. The best advice I have is actually to consult a mortgage professional every time you're thinking about making a change to your mortgage because there's certain things that may, they may know, they may see, there may be other products out there that are available that you may not be aware of, or quite frankly, the mortgage that you have or the mortgage that you're thinking about locking into may not be the best mortgage for you anymore. So it's important that every time you make a big change to your mortgage, consult a mortgage professional and an independent one, somebody who isn't tied to a specific bank or a specific lender, but tied to you and what your best interests are. And honestly, I think variable mortgages long term, whether interest rates are going up or whether they're going down, or whether they're staying flat are almost always going to outperform. My wife and I, we've carried variable rate mortgages even when interest rates were going up. And lo and behold, it's proven to be a benefit. So that's our three criteria. Please, before you make that choice to lock in your variable rate mortgage, consult a mortgage professional. And again, do us that favor, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you found this information useful, please, please, please hit that like button so more people like you can see it. Cheers.